applying the most sensitive techniques that we've actually been able to go back to a 400,000 year old bones of Neanderthal ancestors from Spain and retrieve at least the mitochondrial genome there. Using these techniques and new very efficient ways we developed to sort of manipulate the DNA when we have extracted it from the bone, we have now been able to sequence the genome of the Neanderthal to very, very high quality, actually higher quality than most present-day genomes that have been sequenced from people who live today. This should be the DNA of an ancient human, so that means mostly very short reads, but we can sequence it with a very good quality and the most work to do is after sequencing to work with the data and to build sequences from these fragments we analyzed. When we compare the Neanderthal genome to present day people, we find that many people today carry pieces of DNA that are almost identical to the Neanderthal genome, yet quite different from other people who live today. The explanation for that is that our ancestors, somewhere 40 to 90,000 years ago, actually mixed with Neanderthals in the Middle East, where we know there were Neanderthals. And those people then became the ancestors of everybody outside Africa, so they carried with them, if you like, the Neanderthal sort of contribution in the genome also to areas where Neanderthals had never existed. The dream is, of course, that some of these changes would be the biological basis of what set humans on such a special historical trajectory. The fact that we, and not the Neanderthals or any other extinct forms of humans, developed technology and the culture that allowed us to increase in size from a few hundred thousand people probably, hundred thousand years ago to seven billion today, allowed us to colonize the whole planet, fly to Mars, etc. So of course we are particularly interested in, in, in things that are influencing the brain, looking at say proteins, for example, that are expressed in the brain. And there are a number of interesting changes there that one now functionally have to follow up. Huge problem, especially when you study human remains, is contamination from present day humans. So, for example, dust particles in a room where humans walk around is to a big extent skin fragments that does contain a lot of DNA. So a single dust particle can overwhelm the little amounts of DNA you have there in your extract from a bone. Over the years, we have essentially become more and more and more paranoid about contamination, taking more and more steps to avoid it, to a point where we now have a laboratory that is pretty similar to, for example, a chip factory. People are, for example, not allowed to enter any other part of the lab before they enter the clean room in a day. They have to start working there and can then not go back into the clean room again because in other parts of the lab, we of course hand large amounts of DNA. The Neanderthals live on in many of us today a little bit, which may actually be even sort of a, a consolation for the fact that they are gone and are not here anymore.